right, we're up to the start of the 1020 turn of Terrible Swift Sword. As you can see here, the situation has indeed escalated, but good for the Union. We've got the first core. We have here Reynolds, and I believe Wadsworth is underneath him. And uh, it's Stone, I think, maybe is the, the brigade commander of the uh, second brigade over here. You've got Meredith and the first brigade, aka the Iron Brigade. So all these guys are uh, very good quality troops. You can see a decent morale on, uh, on all of them. They're going to work their way over to McPherson's Woods here and uh, form the left flank of the Union line. Currently, Archer's units have kind of reformed, and the Confederates kind of got all out of whack here because um, back here, the cavalry, which is Zola Buford's cavalry, has now kind of reconsolidated initially. Their line was split with Devon's brigade on this side of the Chambersburg Pike and uh, Gamble over here. Now they've all kind of worked their way as they cross the, the creek here. They've worked their way all to one side, um, all still in skirmish formation. And it's Pettigrew there. He's kind of scattered. So the Cavalry took some casualties uh, and, and skirmish formation is, in, is designed to eliminate excessive casualties. Uh, so everybody firing from, from skirmish formation takes a column shift left. Everybody firing at skirmishers takes a, a column shift left. But, and they, they get some, instead of getting pinned, they retreat to hexes. All those things are helpful for skirmishers, except um, it, it's still hard for them to disengage in this game. The way this game works, uh, you know, compared to what I've played the most of, which would be Line of Battle or the old, uh, the latest iteration of the old regimental subseries from the gamers, there it's fairly easy to disengage, and units, when they retreat, they back up. So here, when you retreat, or when you leave it, or when you, when you retreat before melee, for example, uh, which is a disengagement, essentially. Instead of just backing out of the hex, you have to turn around and move out. The only way you can move in this game is through your frontal hexes. Um, the only unit that can ever back up is artillery that does a retreat or retire by prolong. Um, it's the only way, that, it's the only type of unit that can back out of a hex in the entire game. So. Even skirmished, dismounted cavalry cannot back out of a hex, even on a retreat or a voluntary disengagement. You have to turn around and run away. So when you turn around and run away, you get shot at. Um, now, I believe the skirmisher rules, when they retreat before melee, they don't take the enfilade fire. Um, they don't offer up the enfilade fire bonus. But these guys, when they retreat before melee, end up facing the other way, uh, or if they're they're forced if they're forced to retreat via um, defensive fire from the Confederate forces, then they're stuck facing the wrong way, like one or two hexes away. So a number of times, as the Confederates have pushed up aggressively onto the uh, the the cavalry line you end up with cavalry units that are facing the other way that are going to take enfilade fire. So the, the, it's, it's been tough getting used to that, of having units that are facing the wrong way at so many points um, during the game, where I'm used to the retreats off of a line. So the, the, the lines coming into contact and retreats flowing off of that line, um, I'm used to those all facing the right way, whereas here they're all facing the wrong way. So it's taken some getting used to, um, and you just kind of kind of plan for it. So as a result, I was probably more closer up on the line with my skirmish cavalry 
that I should have been. I probably should have been continually moving away and never allowing the Confederates to actually meet me at the line. The question is, if I did that, I would most likely probably not be, not still be on McPherson's Ridge, um, especially pushing with the Confederates. I might be even further back um, to this Seminary Ridge line here. Um, if I was trained not to engage, so, or, or try to not ever let my cab actually get caught uh, by the Confederate infantry. What I ended up doing was keeping them up more, pushed aggressively with the Confederates, they kept bumping lines, so the cavalry would continue to, to do that retreat before melee, but sometimes they'd get caught out on withdrawal fire and get a pin result, which would force them to retreat, or get a route result, which would be a, a full-on route. So, uh, they were able to, to fairly minimize casualties. I think I, I took maybe three or four strength points loss um, for all of Buford's units. Uh, they actually inflicted a lot more damage on the Confederates than the Confederates inflicted on them. So that was good uh, from that aspect. Uh, now they will do the best they can to hold. I did a full on. They were initially up here at the start of this turn. I did a full, full length retreat. This one guy here um, got a pin result, and so he retreated back two hexes, so he's kind of stuck out in the open. Uh, but the rest of these guys were able to get away from the uh, advancing Confederates and form a solid line along McPherson's Ridge. Um, so they will, f they will cover that right flank of the Union line until These guys here, and this is what Double Day and Stone. That's Stone. Well, I don't know who, I don't know who my other guy is up on the, the second brigade. Uh, this is Paul here, I think. No, Roly. So Roly and Stone, Rolling Stone. Um, they'll make their way up here, and what they'll end up doing is forming along here to be that right side of the Union line. So Confederates. I only have Pettigrew over here pushing the Union right, and he's kind of scattered, as you can see. I got a couple of route results on some uh, defensive fire. And uh, so that's kind of split up his brigade a little bit. Um, oops. Tweezers. Oh, it was Cutler. Cutler's the second brigade. That's right. So Wadsworth is the first division, Reynolds, first court. Um, and, but I do have all this Confederate artillery that I'm trying to get up online along Hare's Ridge here so they can start shelling um, onto McPherson's Ridge. So artillery's kind of been a non-factor as they've been racing to keep up with this rapid Confederate advance. Now back here we've got Brockenbro and he's got his full brigade ready and they're gonna slam in full force either into Cutler's brigade or I may swing him around and try and get around on the Iron Brigade here. Because um, Brockenbro is currently my one unengaged Confederate Brigade at full strength. The problem is, they're not very big. R3, R2, 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 I don't know who's under Brockenbro here. Um, R3, so not very big, you know, for the, the uh, Iron Brigade over here. Get the 24th Michigan, which is a 5, 7 Wisconsin's a 4, and you got a 3 and a 3, so um, close in size, but not a little bit of an advantage there Iron Brigade. So we'll see how Brock and Bro does um, against, against the Iron Brigade. He may have a better shot against Cutler, who's R3, R2, R4, R3. Well, not much better there. So we'll have to see. Slippery counters. Um, so that's pretty much where things stand for now. Uh, it's going to be a while before the Confederates get significantly more troops. Um, not, not until 11 a.m. will we start to get guys, and I think they'll be coming in. Uh, from the north here, so um, Confederates will have to make do 
with what they can. I was able, I was able to, one reason why I was able to get these guys up here quick enough is that I force marched them for about three turns, which gives them an extra three movement points per turn. Fortunately, nobody rolled um, fatigue, which is good because, I mean, these are higher morale troops. I have not been doing that with these guys because uh, they're, they're a D quality not the greatest morale troops, they're more likely to get fatigued if I do that, so I'm marching them in a little bit slower, hoping that the Cav can kind of hang on to that Union right um, until I can get some infantry in position. So, um, as you can see, AP Hill now on the field. I'm sure the Confederates feel so much better now that their kind of dithering syphilitic commander has joined them on the field. So, anyway back in a bit.